Okay, so a little bit about my studio and how things are working here. First of all, schools are back in person and that means that I decided to go back in person myself. The schools, our primary schools, are not doing masks. Just to give you some context around the setup that I have and, and where it's coming from. Our primary schools are not wearing masks. I have only a few students in secondary schools and I have mostly primary school aged students as many people will be aware and some adults. And so really all of my setup, all of my design has been around, okay, what are the primary schools doing? Because I want to match that in a way that's applicable to a home studio. Okay, so I teach from my home. What I've done is I've added another piano so that I can have three instruments or rather another digital. So I now have two digitals and my regular acoustic. I did that so that when I have buddy lesson students, because I didn't want to let go of my buddy lessons, when I do have those multiple students together, I can still have my own instrument while they have one each. Because without that, I just didn't think it was all that workable. Now I could have made it work. I definitely could have found a way around that. So if you're like, oh, I have to invest in another instrument, you don't. I don't think that's fully necessary at all. However, we're also doing some construction right now. And probably next year sometime is when we're gonna be ready to move the studio upstairs. When we do that, I'm gonna to need to have a new, a few new digital pianos because the acoustic will not move up our tiny little stairs in our tiny little Dublin home. So that's some context around that. I also needed a new instrument anyway. So I probably would have bought a cheaper one to have as my third instrument, but I bought something decent because it's going to go upstairs when we move, okay? So here's how my lessons are working. Students are, parents have been told to absolutely 100% make sure they are not early. <laughs> so students cannot be early, I've told parents that. When it is their lesson time, they come up to the door, I let them in. During that time, and this is something that has even changed in the last week since I started, I like last minute almost before I started my lesson, was like, no, when they come, when I'm doing the coming in part, I am wearing a mask, so I do have one in front of me. That's because I wear that while they're coming in and while I'm doing all the cleaning, because there's so much moving around, I didn't think I could maintain a distance during that time. So I let them in, they immediately go and wash their hands, and in, their, in the bathroom, there's obviously soap and a footstool for my wee ones to get up to the sink. And then uh, there, I decided to um, just use more microfiber cloths because they're cheap to buy in a in a budget store around here like a dollar store so i used loads of them i bought so many microfiber cloths little ones and i have a stack of them and so students take the top one to dry their hands and then they put it in a basket underneath i'm not going to tour the bathroom unless anyone really really wants to see it but it's just a basic bathroom and that's my system for the drying hands because i didn't want to use paper towels I mean, seriously, no guilt meant from me if you are using paper towels. I get it. It's an easier solution. This is it's one of those things that I just I just hate throwing them away. It just hurts my brain. And so I decided, no, I'm going to wash my microfiber cloth. So that's what I've done in terms of the hand washing. While they're coming in and getting set up, um, I'm finalizing anything and cleaning anything I need to from the last lesson. But I do have a few minutes at the end of the lesson where I'm also doing that. So they go through their lesson. During the lesson, I'm staying distant from them. So I am always at least a meter away. And remember, I'm following the primary school guidelines. Primary schools are not even necessarily staying a meter distant all the time, but that is their goal. My goal is most of the time two meters, uh, sometimes down to one meter, okay? Again, all depends on where you live and what's happening where you are, but this is what's happening with me. So with that in mind, I have my table in a different part of the room than I used to. I have the piano beside me, the digital piano, the new one, and then I have their piano that they're sitting at. So when I move to the digital piano, I am closer to them, but I'm still a meter away. I have designated spots, which I'll show you for them to put their stuff on um, because they need to organize their own things and they need to have everything with them. 
I've also put together pencil pouches with everything they would need to um, to to use during lessons sometimes so that we don't have to share anything. So the biggest thing for me that was challenging for sure was getting them to not share anything. <laughs> that was definitely difficult and um, it took some thinking through. So if that's hurting your head as well, I do get it, I understand it, and I'll talk you through what I've done to make that happen. Um, now, then, in terms of the routine, so the first week back, I went through the rules with them, and then we followed a routine that we're gonna be following every week. That is on the board behind me. I'll just talk you through it briefly now, and then I'll go over it again as I tour the studio. So we start with washing hands, then they do improv with me, so I play, because that's something we've really missed, is improvising together, so we do improvisation. Then we do a warm-up, so that's a warm-up piece, a piece they already know really well, and we pick it out from their warm-up set list, and they play that. Then we work on challenges, and I use a second screen to show them cards, flashcards and things like that as needed. Then we do repertoire, so that's the big portion of the solo lesson time. And then if they have a piano buddy coming, that's when the buddy arrives. The buddy needs to go wash their hands and the student who's already here switches to the digital piano so that I can clean that instrument, okay? Then we have the buddy lesson time and I can go into more details about that if it's interesting to you guys. And then at the end of that, three minutes early, I'm letting out, sorry, yeah, three minutes early I'm letting out the first of the buddy students. The second buddy student has their solo lesson time. And then three minutes early I'm letting them out so that no one has to cross paths. And so that I have those three minutes to clean the main piano. I do start cleaning the rest of the room while they're here. Um, but then I clean the main piano in those three minutes in between students. I had it set up and planned that I would have them move and make some notes during those the two minutes before that. However, I've ended up mostly not using that. So we can talk more about that if you're curious. But let's do this tour, shall we? I hope this is gonna work now. So the, the way I've had to set this up is a little bit unusual. So hopefully it's gonna work. And if it doesn't, hey-ho, we'll all learn something about dealing with technology woes, shall we? Okay. So here we go. Right, so I'm gonna start where I am right now, actually. I'm gonna start at the desk. So this is what I've been looking at, as we see, that's you guys. And we'll have a ton of the desk right there. So that's the um, keyboard that has, been, oh sorry, the laptop that has been making all the terrible noises and it's continuing to do so right now. But hopefully you guys can still hear me fine. Then beside that we have whiteboard markers and pens and pencils and stuff. This is all for me to demonstrate and to show people things. And a giant die because it's easy to see at a distance, so I brought that with me. Then I have my iPad in front of me in case I need that and my little mask. When I'm teaching I put my stack of my copies of students' books right here so that I have them to refer to so I make sure I have every book that every student that day is going to need. And then in front of that, we have just a keyboard and a mess. Okay, so we're zooming out a little bit. I've got my tea right there. Over here is the couch and stuff, because this is my living room, and we don't use that. So the uh, coffee table is just scooched in front of it, just to discourage students from accidentally sitting at that. Then, underneath my station here. So this little station, by the way, is made up of a very old desk that I've used for ages. That is basically a broken table that happened to be the perfect size to fit beside the piano. Then I bought a second laptop, little laptop uh, table. I won't do that, sorry. Whoops. Uh, and that is just in behind, so you can see that. And then we've got a whole bunch of wires and cables. Then we have this little basket right here. So this is my class for cleaning the piano and everything and so I have a whole stack of them and when I'm finished with one I put it in that second basket so it's empty right now because I'm not teaching today so I haven't cleaned anything extra and then I have my uh, set of cleaning supplies which is right here so that's the main 
cleaner that I am using. I do not want to recommend any specific brand of cleaner because I've done my best research in terms of what's safe, but I'm still, I'm not a piano technician and my pianos are not particularly sensitive, so I, yeah. I don't want to recommend a specific brand. The one I'm using is Dettol, but please do your own research on what will not hurt your piano keys, okay? Now, beside me here, right here, I have my new lovely digital piano. So this is a Kawai CA49. I chose that one because it's the cheapest one that has, I don't know if you guys are going to see, oh, you kind of can, real wooden keys. So it has the real keys. It's not a hybrid, but it has a, the real wooden keys from that are the same as the, one of their upright pianos, but it goes into a sensor, obviously, on the inside, okay? So that's why I chose that, because I really liked the action. I didn't get a chance, there's a, if you're not aware of this, there's a serious deficit of digital pianos right now, so that was a tough part of, of setting all this up, was trying to research and get a digital piano while there's so much trouble getting your hands on one, so you can't, you can't try out loads of these things, but what I did was I, uh, I managed to test out a CA99, which is a much fancier version, and the action was really what I loved about that, and I thought, yeah, the CA49 is going to be good enough. Um, so that's what I've gone with, and I'm really happy with that choice. I have to say, it is a, it's a big step up for me versus playing on the Yamaha P105 that I have, and that I've been using for my online lessons in the office. Okay, so then I have my piano bench down here. You guys can ask me to double back on anything uh, that you need. Yeah, okay, no questions so far. I'm about to move, so I'm just checking. <laughs> it's white. Yeah, I like that it's white. I always kind of like the look of white pianos, and I was like, mm, being a bit nervous about ever going, going with one. Like, I never buy white clothes, because I'm terribly messy. But I uh, decided to go for it, and I do think it's beautiful. Okay, on top of that, I have my wee whiteboard. This is from Ultimate Music Theory. Let's just give her a shout out. Oh, can't see it. Okay, you can kind of see it. I'll show you at a different angle in a sec. But that's Ultimate Music Theory. The wonderful Glory um, gifted that to me. And it's well worth it. It's a lovely little thing. It's just like the size of like a a placemat for a table and that's perfect and it's really handy for quickly scrolling something on to um, show to students. So I have that there. Then up above that we have a camera. Okay, so this is um, be careful not to turn that. But this is a Logitech C whatever the one that got sold out, but I've had it for ages, so I didn't buy it at the exorbitant prices. So a lot of work can anyway, and that's what I've been using for my overhead view of my keys. This is a new way of suspending it though. So this is actually a selfie stick, which I still have my husband, and um, he had it for traveling. So let me show you it in behind here. Okay, so that is literally just a selfie stick, and I've just sat it on the CA49 because of the shape of it I can use it as a table which is very handy for all this stuff I have okay so that just goes like that and I've just tucked the wire behind there just for neatness but that's running into sorry dodgy camera work I knew this would be a bit rough but I get an idea that's my USB hub powered USB hub which uh, where I put all my USBs, okay? And that runs into the Mac, which is over there. Um, and I'm using the Mac during lessons. That's the old one, it's from 2012. It's worked very, very hard in its lifetime. And right now, most of the time, it doesn't have to stream any anything, so it does fine. It's just for running to narrow, basically. That's the whiteboard that I was mentioning before. Ultimatemusicleary.com, if you head it. And, uh, yeah. That looks very well for the grocery and stuff. I find I use a blank side more than anything, but it is handy because I don't have to the sack there. Okay, now we're over here, and I'm going to have to be careful not to give you a thumb on this stuff. So this is my regular piano, and this is where the students sit now. So when they come in, they can use the floor, okay, and I leave it open at all times. They're coming in for 
down the hallway, and the construction workers and mess there, uh, both of mess outside the window, that's a great thing, isn't it? They come in this way, and then they're asked to put their bags immediately down here, which is a boarding inside just for this, and I have some stuff inside there sometimes for them. They put their stuff there, and then they uh, go wash their hands, and then they sit down at the camp. Okay, um, that's the piano, there's something crazy there, and then this is the new camera, this is not, this is um, something I've always had there that records all my lessons, and then, I can move it to, yeah, put it to the side, that is the screen that I'm using, okay? Can you guys let me know if you could hear while I was wandering around the room? That would be great. Oh yes, Faye, I was wondering that. Okay, so uh, I can't speak much louder than that, but I will talk you through what I was saying there just in case. So over there when we were looking around, what we were looking at was the door where you come in and then the little white table by the window there, that is where they put their stuff and then they sit, they go wash their hands and then when they come back they sit at the piano. So all of the time they're doing that, I wear my mask and then when they sit down and they're in position, they stay in that area, I stay in this area and we do go maskless because as I said, primary schools are not using masks at the moment. I should say face covering, shouldn't I? Then we have the screen up on the top there that I was also showing you and that is so that I can show them flashcards. I'm really proud of that. <laughs> I'm so glad I got that because it's been fantastic. Really, really um, just so handy already. So like I'd be showing them the inside of Tanara and stuff like that to show them where they can get their backing tracks, but also using it for flashcards and that's been so handy. It's just wonderful. So that is literally just running a cable and it is hooked in to my Mac there, the display port. Okay, so that's everything over there, apart from the little camera and what I was saying about that was it's uh, just for recording lessons. I am planning on using the screen for online games, like screen games as well going forward, Carrie, but I'm not doing that yet because mostly we're focused on playing together, improvisation and all of that, as um, and then simple like oral games and stuff, but not so much game games in these first few weeks back. Um, this might be unusual, but that's not our main focus right now, because we have been able to keep that up, but we haven't been able to do duets for a long time, so that's our big focus right now. Um, okay, let me just show you the other side of the room, and then I'll come back to the less shaky, horrible camera. Sorry about that turn there, that was elegant. Okay, so over that side, we have the digital piano. That is where the body number two sits, and, um, that is what I was using outside. So that's a Yamaha P105, old model. The new one is, the newest one's 505, but that was 125, whatever. They're all basically the same instrument as far as I can tell. Um, so there's that. No one sits in that chair. That's just tucked away. And that's our regular TV because, as I said, this is my living room. And then we have a pile of stuff. See, it's not very elegant because I've moved everything around. I have to have a big pile of stuff there and then a little table. So that is just for them writing stuff down and for when I have multiple students and I need one to do theory work and stuff like that. So that's enough of a distance, you can't really tell, but that's enough of a distance from me. It's about, it's not quite two meters, I think it's about a meter and a half, but they are facing the other direction while breathing, so that is helpful. Then on the board, you know what, I'm gonna get up and show you the board but I'm not going to talk while I do it, and then I'll talk when I get back. So let's just have a look at the board. Okay, so that was the board. I think that's the last thing I had to show you around the room, but let me know if there's anything else you want to look at. Um, 
just want to, I'm aware that I'm making you watch such a shaky camera, so I wanted to come back to the main one that's not moving so much. So the board is, um, what I was showing you there was our routine. So I've laid that all out with just me drawing little pictures to represent each stage of our lesson. So where it changes color, that's where we're going from the one-on-one -on -one portion of the lesson to the buddy lesson time. So if it's a student who doesn't have buddy lessons, they're not, um, yeah, they're not doing that part. So they just stop at the purple part. Hopefully that gives you an idea. And then above that, I just couldn't help showing you. That was um, from a student. I asked them to surprise me with something when they got back so they could choose anything musical at all. And I had some really fun surprises. One of them wrote a song, which is awesome. I had to ask her to sing it very softly, but uh, I did get to hear that and that was awesome. Um, but that one was, uh, she looked up five facts. One of my suggestions for the surprise was five facts about a composer, but she did too. And she made a poster out of it. And I thought that was awesome, so I put it up. And then there's the rules up the top. Those are just very loose. I've said no singing, but actually soft singing is okay. Like they're gonna keep changing, but it's just to give a simple list that we can run through together. That's really the idea about it. And that it's a discussion point more than anything. Question from Diana there about the pencil page. Good point, Diana. I'm going to grab one. Okay, so this is a pencil page. Uh, some of my students got the bigger practice pouches, but for the ones that don't need all of that stuff, like the playful practice cards and all of that, which, by the way, the practice kit, that full pouch, that is detailed on the blog. So if you look up practice kit, colorful keys, you'll find that. But this is the more basic version, so that's what I'll show to you guys. So inside we have stickers at the back. I split my stickers up in different sheets so that they can keep them on them and we can use them and then they can get a new sheet, right? So we're not sharing all the stickers all the time. Then we have three die, uh, three dice, so that they can use those for practice games. We have a rubber, I should say eraser, shouldn't I? Um, we have little post-its, which are great for writing notes about practice, but also for covering up uh, bars or measures for doing different practice techniques as well. Then we have three different colored uh, pencils. I just took out all of the pencils and crayons I had and sharpened everything and gave people three random colors so that I, I mean, I might as well get rid of the pencils was my idea and it doesn't matter what three colors they have. I don't care. I just want them to have three. Then I also have a regular pencil and I have a whole pile of them. I didn't show you guys on the windowsill, I can show you if you're interested, but they're just a little sharp and flat uh, cup with pencils in them. And that means uh, if they break their pencil in the middle of the lesson, there's loads of spares there and I can just tell them to take one and put it in their pouch before I take it home. So that's what's in there. Oh yeah, and the little tags, you know, like post-it flags, because we use them for marking pieces. So like which ones we're working on or whatever. Hopefully that helps Diana. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, I feel like I need to make do not sit signs for myself as siblings, students and parents can only sit on chairs that are washable. So much to think of. Yeah, there is so much to think of. Look, we're not going to get it perfect. You might look at what I've just shown you and say, why did you do that that way? Or, oh my gosh, that's so dangerous. Why are you doing it that way? Right? And that's kind of my point here, more than anything, is we're not going to get it right. We can only do something that is considered and thoughtful and the best, given the information we have available. And that's what I've tried to do here. Um, and hopefully looking through it was useful. Please let me know if it was. Please uh, hit the like button on this video if you thought this was helpful to see my studio and see what it looks like and all of that. Um, yeah, and let me know any follow-up questions in the chat there. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys where we were at. Any 
the questions there. Yes, Sam, uh, your TV, so looking at your screen, I'm wondering if I can use my TV the same way since it's in the center of the room. I usually push it back out of the way. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so I almost thought about using my TV, the regular one, which is over there, and is usually actually under the stairs right there, the red part of the room. So I thought about doing that, but the turning around aspect in, in my setup was awkward. Also, the cables running across the floor was awkward. So what I did instead was I looked up I was like, oh, I don't want to buy a new screen, to be honest. But I looked up Dundeal, which is like Craigslist, something like that. So just like a second-hand seller, a buyer to, sorry, person-to-person -person kind of trading site, and found that one. And she warned in the description, she was like, listen, I'm selling it for just, you know, a tenner, basically. Uh, selling for this much because the only thing that works on it is the HDMI port and I was like great I want the HDMI port that's the only thing I need so I was really happy to pick that up second hand because it's a TV I actually prefer that it's a TV rather than a computer monitor so it has a remote very very handy I'm already using that so much because kids will get distracted by what I'm doing on my screen if it's just mirroring um, and I'm not doing something intentionally for them, like I'm just writing my notes. I don't, not that I want to hide those from them, but they're distracting, right? So being able to just turn it off and on with the remote has been great. So I highly recommend a TV as your second screen. I think it's a great solution. Um, Helen, I mean, same answer as with a piano. She asked if you have wooden keys on the keyboard, can they be sanitized? On the new keyboard, can they be sanitized? Same answer as a piano. Um, so yes and no. I mean, it's not as ideally sanitizable as maybe other surfaces, but that's what it is. I didn't mean that they're wooden on the top, by the way. I just meant that they have the wooden underneath versus the P105, which is plastic all the way through the key. And you can really feel the difference in the weight quality of the keys, I much, much prefer it. The P105 is still a grand instrument, nothing wrong with it, but I do prefer this new guy, as I should, it's more than double the price. But uh, yeah, in terms of sanitization, it would be the same as the piano. The other thing I want to say about that though, is this is the least important instrument for me to sanitize, because I play it. I've told them. I'm the only one who plays the white piano. That's it. No one else. So, yeah. Um, Lynn, no, I don't have parents staying during the lesson. That's generally, generally true, that I usually don't have parents stay during the lesson anyway. But also, I definitely don't want them right now, because I can't add any more people. I'm maxed out. This is the only way I can have enough distancing, is having my two or three students plus myself. Most of the time, two students. I the occasional group of three, but to be fair, they are people who would already interact very closely outside the studio, so I'm not actually creating a new situation, a new convergence of <laughs> germs, um, if we see it like that. Sheila said, I just set up our old little TV and use it all the time. I project scores to show things when I can't point to their scores. I also project my keyboard camera for rotes and scales. Yes, it's great. If you're doing one thing in terms of a socially distanced studio, I think that's one of the best things you can add is a screen close to the student that you can control remotely because, yeah, it's huge, isn't it, Sheila? It's great. Love it. And the kids like it too for the flashcards because they're bigger, so it's kind of easier. So, um, yeah, that's been great. It's worked really, really well. Okay, in case any of you missed it at the start there, I was talking about next week. Um, oh, you may have noticed also that we're not doing a web review today. I think you can understand how that would have made this whole situation even more complicated, so I decided no. Um, but we're not doing web reviews today, we will get back to them the week after next. But next week, our chat is going to turn into day one of our birthday celebrations. So it's called, by the way, Success Story spectacular so any of you who are in the facebook group 
Vibrant Music Studio teachers will be familiar with Success Story Saturdays. People love doing it, I get great feedback on it, and that they look forward to sharing their successes and it makes them think more positively about their week, you know, they pick out that thing that's a success and they get to share it on Saturday and they know that's coming up and it's awesome. And I thought we could all use a week-long Success Story Saturday. But obviously it wouldn't all be on Saturday, in fact none of it is, and therefore I wanted to change the name. And yeah, we're going with Success Story Spectacular. So it's inspired by our Success Story Saturdays, but it's a week long and it includes tons of other fun stuff. So we're going to have uh, clips about success stories and ideas from teachers from all over the world. And then we're going to have prizes every day and we're going to have fun stuff. Lots of fun things. So many fun things. I'm not going to give it all away. But it starts uh, this time next week. So 4 p.m. Dublin time next week. It's going to be back in my office so the audio will be better. <laughs> and the video and everything. Um, and then from there it goes on. To, it's on at 2 p.m. every day from there. So if you're on the email list already you'll get the notification and hopefully you can come along to some of them live because I would love to see you all there um, and hang out with you and celebrate Vibrant Music Teaching's birthday. It's going to be an extra special one. I can't believe it's the third birthday. I mean, I cannot believe it. It's incredible that it's already almost been that long and it's been fantastic and it's not coming to a conclusion anytime soon and I just love to celebrate this time of year for that reason. So that's next week, this time and then two, two hours earlier the other days, Monday to Friday. So five days of prizes and fun and success and just celebrating teaching awesomeness, getting some great ideas, yes, but mostly just going, gosh, aren't we all great? Because we are. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you guys and I hope you can join me for it. Sign up to the email list if you're not already on it so that you can get um, the updates when we go live and I will see you back here for that. Have a fantastic week. Bye for now guys.